Here is something that will absolutely blow your mind and answer one of the biggest questions in the show. Hanging there on his wall, the whale? a picture of a massive whale next to The him. whale! You don't think that could be... No, it can't be. Paul's mom! SpongeBob Conspiracy number four, the evolution theory. Are the Bikini Bottom citizens the result of nuclear radiation? Who is- That is a random ass- Damn boy, he fit! It's a random ass theory. Pearl's mother. That's valid. Who what is it? Is the Krabby Patty secret formula? Probably These crab are meat. The three biggest questions in the show, SpongeBob's crab meat is definitely the Krabby Patty formula. Yo, crab on crab on a burger don't sound too bad now that I think about it. Where are crab today, burgers we're at? We're gonna be answering all three of them and more with just one theory. Get ready for the darkest SpongeBob conspiracy you'll ever see. This is the evolution theory. I thought it was the Mr. Popo theory. So he said darkest. My bad. I'm sitting. I'm sitting here like, okay, okay, Mr. Popo about to make an make an appearance in SpongeBob. I'd love to see it. Mr. Popo, what are you watering? Pot. Pots of what? Pot. Look at SpongeBob's, you know, evolution. You know, as a sperm, and now he is what he is now. Wait, I saw that 69% of y'all have not subbed up yet. So what are y'all doing? Sub up and join the fam. <laughs> We're back with another SpongeBob conspiracy. Guess I'm the SpongeBob guy now. That's that's all I make. You guys really <laughs> love these SpongeBob theories. Alex Bale out with another video. The makers of SpongeBob. I guarantee you, this nigga every Saturday and Sunday he is on the pond trying to catch him some bass and catfish. In fact, this nigga probably in the ocean with it trying to catch him some baby sharks, bro. I guarantee it. SpongeBob interfere, put in their own message to brainwash you people. Squillium sends the doctor in. He's not really a doctor. He's just trying to infiltrate that little round thing on his head there. Oh my God. Thank God for Alex Bale. Look at that. He's helping me prove my point. You know what? Who the hell is this? Why, why, why? Who, wait, are we supposed to know this guy? But that is awesome. Maybe some of you love them a little too much. You know, I got other videos, right? I, I, I make films and stuff too. Anyone want to watch those? Anyways, by far the most popular SpongeBob theory out there is the Bikini Atoll nuclear radiation theory. I it's have, pretty simple. Have y'all heard of that theory, the Bikini Manomano radiation? What? It's been confirmed that Bikini Bottom is actually beneath a real-life place called Bikini Atoll. From okay. 1946 to 1958, the United States did nuclear tests there, devastating the area and leaving it radioactive even to this day. The theory mm. states that the reason why the citizens of Bikini Bottom can talk and have formed advanced societies is because of mutations caused by these nuclear tests. Okay. And that's about the whole theory. Even though there's tons and tons of videos about it, none of them actually go in depth with it or really look through the show for evidence. But y'all know that if Alex Bale is making a theory on it, then it's not gonna be some baby surface level analysis. Yeah, I will Alex. watch every single episode of SpongeBob. I will read every page of the goddamn Wikipedia. If I'm making a theory on it, then you guys know it's gonna be good. And once I really started looking into this theory, I realized that there is so much more here than anyone thinks. Get ready, because today we're going to be solving the biggest mysteries in the history of SpongeBob SquarePants and changing the way you look at the entire show. Okay. So without further ado, let's begin the theory. The Bikini Atoll Theory In order to find out whether the Bikini Atoll Theory is true, we first have to determine whether fish talking and being so intelligent is unique to Bikini Bottom, or if that's just the way the Spongebob universe works. You know, it could just be that all animals in this world are able to talk, and that's completely normal because at the end of the day, Spongebob is still just a cartoon. Yep. Well, if we take a look at Season 10, Episode 10, Feral- I feel like, have I seen it? I'm trying to recall if I've seen an actual fish in the Bikini Bottom. Did we, did we see an actual fish in the Bikini- I don't remember if I saw like a fish- Yes! Cause that's hot, but he's still the talking news fish, but he's still a fish at the end of the day. I can't recall a fish that didn't, that couldn't talk. That's just me. Friends, we get a bit of a hint about how the SpongeBob world works. In this episode, a green moon appears and transforms all the characters into less cartoony, real life versions of themselves. What the hell? Just like in real life, they can't talk and end up trying to eat each other. The French narrator is watching all this unfold, and he says this very important line. I have been monitoring the behavior of the green moon all day. Yes. It is called Neptune's moon, 
Every 100 years, it de-evolves everyone in Bikini Bottom into primal fish. Every 100 years, de -evolve. it de-evolves everyone in Bikini Bottom into, into primal, primal fish. fish. So this implies that the characters in Bikini Bottom are more evolved and were once like these primal fish. Yes. But this doesn't prove that the evolution only exists in Bikini Bottom. It could still be a worldwide phenomenon. Remember that bonus DVD clip I found in my television theory? No. Nope. It was about humans <laughs> studying fish in Bikini Bottom because of their intelligence. Okay, Lab yeah. I do remember this. Have tried to learn the secret of intelligence. Their studies led them to the sea, where the citizens of one undersea colony demonstrated a genius so enormous, the scientists felt compelled to record their actions for use in teaching mankind how to live better. This makes it sound an awful lot like the fish in Bikini Bottom actually are uniquely evolved, and it's not some worldwide phase. Yeah, then, in the Sponge yeah, because they're specifying on those group of fish only. Okay, I see you. 20 year anniversary special, SpongeBob's big birthday blowout, we get a major piece of evidence for this theory. SpongeBob and Patrick take a tour of the surface world and eventually go to a fish store and see some very realistic, less evolved fish. When the hell did this happen? How many movies of SpongeBob are there? What kind of monsters would want to keep fish folk in jail like this? Aww. So beautiful. They can't talk back to SpongeBob and Patrick, and they're actually able to swim freely through the water instead of being affected by gravity. They are clearly showing us that both evolved and primitive. Uh, you know what? I just realized I didn't think about how the fact that all these fucking fish and they don't swim. I <laughs> I just thought about that. <laughs> they're all fish, but they don't swim a single time. They they stay on their feet. Primitive fish exist in this universe at the same time. Now, sometimes we've seen Bikini Bottom characters represented as realistic fish like this, but only when they're out of water, never while they're still in water like these fish. We even see this again in the beginning of the third Spongebob movie, Sponge on the Run. The movie opens with a coral reef full of what these the realistic primal fish, but eventually we get to Bikini Bottom where the more evolved fish live. So there you go, direct proof that the citizens of Bikini Bottom are- I'm not a Spongebob fan for real, because I've never seen this movie a day in my life. I've never even thought heard of this uniquely evolved. This is a very deliberate world building choice for the creators to make. So I guess that kind of confirms the Bikini Atoll theory. Theory confirmed! We did it! Woo! Well, he's, let's he's hold on for go a second. Deeper. As he's much as I'd love deeper. to call this theory complete, there's actually one major piece of evidence that gives me some resistance. Something I've never seen anyone else bring up when talking about this theory. Prehistoric Bikini Bottom. We've seen episodes like UGG or SB129 that show Bikini Bottom millions of years in the past, oh, but yeah. we still see evolved versions of Spongebob and Patrick. Mm. Sure, they may not be super intelligent or advanced, but they're still clearly way more evolved than the primitive realistic versions we see in Feral Friends or in the Fish Store. So how are we seeing these evolutions millions of years before the Bikini Atoll tests? Well, unfortunately, I think the only conclusion is that the Bikini Atoll theory just is it true? I mean, clearly something has caused Bikini Bottom citizens to be uniquely evolved, there's no denying that. Yeah. But whatever caused it took place millions of years ago and couldn't have been the Bikini Atoll nuclear tests. Then, what really caused the evolution? Hold up, hold up. I'm not gonna get over the fact that this nigga SpongeBob has a pineapple for millions of years. How the fuck does he keep finding a new pineapple? Pineapples just don't go to the bottom of the ocean like that. Like, he should not be able to keep finding a pineapple like this. And couldn't have been the Bikini Atoll Plot nuclear hole. tests. Then, what really caused Plot the evolution? Hole. In the entire show, the only thing we've seen that directly affects the evolution of characters is the Green Moon and Feral Friends. Mm. Except the French narrator specifically calls it Neptune's Moon. It is called Neptune's Moon. Named after the ruler of the Seven Seas, Nep King Neptune. Two. King Neptune is a character who's been around since the beginning of the sea. He's a character who the Bikini Bottom citizens view as their god. Yeah. And he's a character who has the ability to change fish into other forms. What the? Oops. King Neptune used his magic to turn the fish of the sea into more evolved subjects for him to rule over. Ooh. He's the one who's been behind it all this time. Now, I could spend this entire- That makes- that makes- That- okay, that was- that was- that was kind of simple when you really think about it. When- if you, like, sit down and just use, like, half your brain, that's really simple. The problem is when I watch Spongebob- When I watch Spongebob, I sit down and I use zero of my brain. So I would have never thought of that in the first place. That's- that's the problem. I don't use my brain when I'm watching Spongebob. A video talking about King Neptune and his weird continuity and contradictions in the show, but- I'll save that for another theory. What I'd much rather talk about are the implications of having evolved and primitive fish coexisting in the sea. Now, no, someone spit and they said he just turned Mr. Krabs into a human and that boy was chilling underwater. 
No resistance. He was just chilling, drinking that ocean air. Okay, that makes no sense. Okay, I see you. Now, we know that this evolution isn't specific to just Bikini Bottom. We've seen different cities and places far across the ocean that still have talking fish. Yeah. Which makes sense because the marine life in Bikini Bottom has evolved to resemble humans, so it's no surprise that just like humans, they've expanded beyond Bikini Bottom and colonized other areas of the sea. But now, I have an interesting question for you. What is the relationship between evolved fish and primitive unevolved fish? Well, they probably just peacefully coexist in the sea without bothering each other. You know, just like real life humans and animals. Nice. Wait a second. Wait, we have the fish in zoos? They killed all the actual fish? They're racist? The bikini bottom fish are racist. These niggas are racist. <laughs> Someone said, how can Sandy talk? The same way every other fish can talk. It's a cartoon. <laughs> That's why. The war. In season three, episode 10, the Krusty Krab training video, there is this hilarious, absurd moment when they're talking about Mr. Krabs. After the war, Crab stayed secluded in a deep depression that seemed endless. Like after what the war, war? Happened in Bikini Bottom, they just tell us this and then completely drop it. How but old is Mr. Krabs? Context, is it possible that Krabs fought in a war against these primitive wild fish of the sea? I mean, let's Mr. Krab had a Glock. Oh my! Mr. Krabs was shooting everybody up, bro. Everybody up. I guarantee you, the only people he murdered too was poor people and homeless men. That's the type of nigga Mr. Krabs is. Your friends, some of those de evolved fish were massive compared to the evolved fish, and they immediately started attacking Damn. each other. Damn! Damn! The battle for the survival of the fittest. That look a little too. That looks sexual to me. Squareware. Squareware wants pearl. Squareware is a pedo. Rages on in the animal kingdom. So yeah, in order for the bikini bottom citizens to survive and expand, they would probably break into some kind of war. And from the sounds of it, this war must have been pretty. Pretty brutal to put Mr. Krabs into such a deep depression. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Is there actually any evidence that the only thing that put Mr. Krabs, Krabs into depression is not having money? Evolutionary so war. he might have just well, went broke. With the few flashbacks we get, we know that Mr. Krabs served in the Navy. And yes, they were sailing ships on an ocean, even though they're already underwater. This is actually a real life phenomenon where certain parts of the sea can have a higher level of salinity and yeah. it looks like an underwater ocean. Yeah. Shout out Miss Parks, my high school marine biology teacher. We also know from maps of Bikini Bottom that the town is surrounded by this underwater ocean. So that places Mr. Krabs war outside of Bikini Bottom where this evolutionary war would have to take place. Okay. Then if we took a look at Mr. Krabs' home, we see it is full of memorabilia from his past days in the Navy. But hidden within here is something that will absolutely blow your mind and answer one of the biggest questions in the show. Wait, 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 I wanna see it, I wanna find it, I wanna find it, I wanna find it, hold up. Okay, we have these fish on the wall. Okay, there is an actual person over here on the left side of the wall, okay. What is something that will blow my mind? What is something that will blow my mind? So the things that got my eye right now are the fish and the actual, this actual person on the wall. Um, I can't recognize any of these pictures on this wall. There's a whale. There's a whale. Is it the whale? And here is something that will absolutely blow your mind and answer one of the biggest questions in the show. Hanging there on his wall. The whale? A picture of a massive whale next to The whale! Him. You don't think that could be... No, it can't be. Pose, mom! I got it! I got it! I'm giving myself a pat on the back, nigga. Pat on the back. Pearl's mother? Pearl is Mr. Krabs' whale daughter. The show never really explains how a crab can be the father of a whale, but most people just assume she was adopted. People have been speculating about who Pearl's biological mother is for years, and I think we finally just found our answer. We see two photos of this whale on a ship in season three, episode nine. Just one episode before we find he was being a whore on the Navy. He was a Navy whore. He was a Navy whore. Now Mr. Krabs fought in a war. Since this is among all of Mr. Krabs' Navy stuff, I think we can assume that this is something he encountered and not just some random picture of a whale on a ship above the ocean. The whale is massive compared to the ship. We've seen adult whales in Bikini Bottom before, but they are nothing compared to the size of this whale. This has a much closer resemblance to Pearl when she de-evolved in Feral Friends and became massive. So this has to be an unevolved primitive whale, and the picture clearly shows them fighting. Not only does this prove that there was a he war fucked the enemy and primitive fish, and then and then the whale died. That's why he was depressed, cause Pearl's mom got killed in the war. Oh, oh, this is cool. Oh, oh, this. I'm getting horny. 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 Oh shit. Oh shit. The pieces are coming together. Pearl's mom died in the war, cause they had they had to kill Pearl's mom. They had to kill her. 
but before they killed her, he fucked her and had Pearl. Or, 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 instead of that, did the, did the whale tell Mr. Krabs that she had a daughter and, and, and the whale's last wish was to take care of her daughter? What if he actually, the, like, they're not, not they're not gen, uh, biolog biological father and daughter, but he's raising, he's raising her as a stepdad. Okay, 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 okay. But Mr. Krabs definitely fought in it. But this also implies something very dark. Mr. Krabs killed Pearl's mother. Yes. The only direct reference we get in the show to Pearl's mother is one of Mr. Krabs' many sayings, Mother of Pearl. <laughs> mother of Pearl! Mother of Pearl! Holy mother of pearl! He uses it in places something like holy crap or dear god, only saying it when something truly shocking or terrible happens. Because he knows the terrible thing that happened to Pearl's mother. Why did okay. Mr. Krabs go into such a deep depression after the war? Because he's haunted by what he's done. And the smoking harpoon to prove it is right there on his wall. So, that leaves us with an important question. Why did he adopt Pearl? After he killed her mother, he probably realized she had an infant daughter like with I said, evolutionary genes. Like I Instead said. Instead of leaving her to die, he adopted her as his own. Yeah. All while keeping the dark secret that he was responsible for her mother's death. Woo! Childhood ruined yet? Well, don't worry. There's still time for this theory to get even okay, worse. Okay. Now's your chance to remove yourself okay. before things get really dark. When's Pearl Mom gonna get her get back though? <laughs> she really letting a stranger raise her, raise her kid. Pearl's mom need to get her a get back for real. Like, get Neptune to revive her ass. Still here? Okay, so here's a fun question. What's the deal with all the pets in Bikini Bottom? How come most fish are basically humans, but a snail or a worm acts like a pet? Well, just like humans have domesticated wild animals, it should be no surprise that evolved fish have domesticated primitive fish as pets. Okay. Unlike the massive primitive fish that the Bikini Bottom citizens had to go to war with, there's also smaller primitive fish like jellyfish, snails, spirit worms, seahorses, and clams that the Bikini Where Bottom citizens were able to form a symbiotic relationship with. Aww, and I thought you said this was gonna be the- Wait, what happened to- what about the bullworm? That big ass worm that Sandy caught. Is that like one of those little tiny worms, but it's like primitive and it doesn't get it's it, did, it doesn't get effective because that nigga was huge. The dark part, Alex. They're living peacefully together. That's They're nice. slaves. Okay, okay, you got me. Here's another fun question. Where do the citizens of Bikini Bottom get their food? I mean, sure, some of it is plant-based, but there sure does seem to be an awful lot of meat-based food under the sea. I think you know where I'm going with this. They the kill Bikini em. Bottom citizens eat primitive fish. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's not cannibalism if they're less evolved than you, right? Facts. There's no moral dilemma there. In Season 3, Episode 13, we see direct proof of this when the characters go fishing for primitive clams. This is I mean, what the fuck else are they gonna eat? Sand? There's nothing else to eat! All you have in the ocean is fish and kelp. Sometimes a nigga wants some meat. Something completely normal in this world. And sometimes a nigga wants some meat. Then there's the chum bucket, which sells chum. Chum. Chum is literally just ground up fish. The show isn't even hiding this. Now, we don't really see too much of the meat harvesting side of Bikini Bottom, and I'm not surprised they're keeping it on the DL, you know, with the whole cannibalism thing, but there is one secret to making food that is kept more secret than anything in Bikini Bottom. This be go crazy. Best secret in the entire show. You already know what I'm gonna say. The Krabby, the Krabby Patty. Patty secret formula. Throughout the show, there's been lots of contradictory evidence about the Krabby Patty secret formula. In Season 4, Episode 7, Mr. Krabs says it's an old family recipe. Your mother knows the Krabby Patty formula? Of course she does! It's an old Krabs family recipe! But in Season 5, Episode 1, apparently Mr. Krabs discovered it on his own by accidentally mixing random ingredients together. I've done it! I discovered the perfect patty batter! Sometimes it's a secret formula, sometimes it's a book, sometimes it's a secret sauce, and any glimpse we get at the formula is just random nonsense. Yeah. There is a ton of contradictory evidence out there, but I think this might all be intentional. In order to throw people off, Mr. Krabs has spread misinformation about the Krabby Patty formula. In fact, he's already done this in Season 3, Episode 18, by hiding a fake formula for Plankton to find that says he's the secret ingredient. Mixed together with the most important ingredient of all, Four heaping pounds of freshly ground plankton. plankton. 
And the contradictions aren't just inside the show. Even one of the SpongeBob crew members once said that Krabby Patties are vegetarian and contain no meat. But I've always been. There's no meat in the Krabby Patty? They're eating veggie burgers? When I tell you I used to want a Krabby Patty so badly. A little suspicious about what the creators say. They've also said that they're not allowed to show fish as food. Except they clearly do with chum, clam fishing, and all the many, many gags where fish turn into food. It's almost like they're not allowed by Nickelodeon to publicly acknowledge this because that could create a controversy, but they could still sneak this dark secret into the show. So what is the true secret ingredient? Where does the meat really come from? It's strange, we never know. really see Mr. Krabs get the meat delivered or at least go out himself to get it it's almost like he has all the meat he needs stockpiled somewhere hmm. okay what primitive meat can mr krabs have access to it can't be meat though they just said it wasn't meat so now i'm confused Maybe is it meat or not onto something from the war hmm what they're could... eating pearls mom could mr krabs have killed during the war that he doesn't want anyone to find out about no, something big enough to supply him with meat for that's years without eating more that's a stretch hmm. What could that be? I'm not falling really for gonna it. Really gonna make me say it? Mr. Krabs is using Pearl's dead mother's carcass to make Krabby Patties. I'm not going for it. Hell no. Nah. I'm not going for it. We did it. Yeah, we solved the mystery. We did it. I refuse <laughs> to so believe glad. that. Season 1, Episode 15, Sleepy Time. Mr. Krabs has a dream that he's on a boat fishing for a massive dollar. This is his memory of killing Pearl's mother. Except now, all he sees her as is money. And take a guess what name he calls the dollar. What you doing, Mr. Krabs? Hey, picking Neptune's pocket. What are you talking about? I'm talking about cold, hard, flipping cash. It's the mighty Moby Dollar. Moby Dollar, a direct okay so maybe i might believe it maybe i might just okay all right and he's raising pearl and when pearl gets big he gonna cook pearl Direct reference to moby dick a story about hunting a whale are you kidding me and that is the evolution theory. I warned you guys this would be a dark one. The Bikini Atoll theory, King Neptune, Pearl's mother, the Krabby Patty formula, we hit everything in this theory. Even if you don't agree with all of it, you gotta admit a lot of this makes sense. Eugene Krabs' aspirations for money and greed have caused him to do terrible, terrible things. At least his love for Pearl seems to be real, so maybe no. there's some small amount of good in him. No. And even though Pearl's mother probably provides tons of meat, eventually he's gonna run out and he'll have to face what he's done. Well, unless, of course, there's another whale he has access to. Mm, yep. Nope. No, 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 Mr. Krabs wouldn't do that. He Pearl. loves Pearl. He's not just raising her for Krabby Patty meat. Even Mr. Krabs isn't that much of a monster. From every side I've ever seen To the sweetest sound I've heard Okay. I'd gladly give up everything For all the money that I've earned I'll proudly give up everything for all the money that I have earned. Me and him the same for the end of that theory. Just gonna end it here before there's any more dark plot twists. You guys have been insanely supportive with these SpongeBob theories, so I guess I have to make more. I've been your host, Alex Bale. Thanks for watching. You look depressed, my dude. These SpongeBob theories are getting to your head. <laughs> these are affecting him in real life. What, do you have Pearl's mom in the fucking refrigerator? You pr I promise if you jump scare me, I'm 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 disliking your video immediately. You better uh, not jump scare me. Hey. Just wanna let you know that I uh I think I'm gonna take a break from the SpongeBob videos for a little bit. Who the fuck are you talking uh, to? It's not you. I mean I mean the videos are great. People people love them, it's just I think I want to go back to making actual films for a bit. Uh, oh, okay then. Nigga, who are you uh, talking thanks to? for everything. I guess I'll just, I'll just see you around. But 
No, you have millions of views. You have sponsors. Why would you forsake them? I just, you know, I don't, I don't want to really make these videos forever. You know, I don't want to be known as the, the SpongeBob guy. <laughs> My boy. What the hell is happening? Of knowledge. If you wish to go back to anonymity, then be my guest. But I know who you really are. We can see that this nigga is like a filmmaker for real, for real. He <laughs> like, okay, I, I can see, I can see that years of being a film filmmaker paid off, cause, cause it sure looked like the end of this video was getting, it was kind of questionable, but okay, all right, all right, that was that was ten out of ten though. I I didn't believe Pearl's mom thing until until some fucking man, Mr. Cab's a bitch. That's why Patrick is the best character on the show. I can't wait for him to make a theory where Patrick is gonna be oh my least favorite character now. Like man, don't touch Patrick.